Almighty God, humbly acknowledging our need for thy guidance in all things, and laying aside all private and personal interests, we beseech thee to grant that we may conduct the affairs of this House and of our country to the glory of thy holy name, the maintenance of true religion and justice, the honour of the Queen and the public welfare, peace and tranquillity of New Zealand, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Honourable Members, I have much pleasure in informing the House that a delegation from the Parliament of Queensland, Australia, led by Peter Dowling, Chair of the Ethics Committee and Leader of the Delegation, is present in the gallery. I am sure Members would wish that the delegation be welcomed. Uh, you got one here. Point of order, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Uh, Mr Speaker, in accordance with uh, discussions at the Business Committee, I seek leave for the House to suspend for the dinner break following the maiden speech uh, statements of Paul Foster Bell and Claudette Hoiti today. Is there any objection to that course of action being followed? There is none. Speaker. Point of order, yeah. Right Honourable Mr Winston. Speaker, uh, my question is really to you and the Ethics Committee from Queensland, and it is, why did they come here? Order. And that is not a helpful point of order. Petitions have been delivered to the clerk. Oh, I've did, did, did. Petitions have been delivered to the clerk for presentation. The petition of Anne Chapman and 1,053 others requesting that the House mandate district health boards to provide a greater choice of mental health treatment and urge the government to initiate an inquiry into the outcomes of mental health treatment. The petition of Margie Martin, Amanda Austin and 31 others requesting that the House inquire into and prevent the dredging, transporting, storing and bioremediation of dioxin and PCB contaminated sediment from the Corpi Canal, Canal in Fokatani. Those petitions stand referred to a select committee allocated by the clerk. No papers have been presented. A select committee report has been delivered for presentation. Report of the Finance and Expenditure Committee on the Reserve Bank of New Zealand's Financial Stability Report, May 2013. The report on the Reserve Bank's Financial Stability Report is set down for consideration. No bills have been introduced. The House come. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, I would like to uh, ask you to give a considered ruling uh, and I'm going to ask you to review your ruling of last week with, with regard to uh, the presence of the leadership, the, the, whether or not Peter Dunn is recognised as the leader of a party. Uh, and I do so in light of the revelations uh, that have become apparent today from the Electoral Commission, uh, where they uh, have indicated uh, that United Future will be treated as a new party for registration and it will not be uh, a matter of re-registration. Uh, Mr Speaker, I, my view is that that certainly uh, casts a different light around 34.1 and 34.4 in the standing orders. The second um, point that I, I, I would like to make, uh, which comes out of there, uh, is that um, the President of the United uh, uh, future party had said that the Commission's requirements are too difficult for any party uh, because it will, re will require uh, signatures as opposed to uh, ele the electronic methods that are, that are used for a re-registration process. And, and the question I've got, sir, is whether uh, you are prepared to wait until they have gone all the way around their members to get the written um, signatures from those people as opposed to electronic, because that will extend the time soon. But the most important question uh, is whether, whether or not, um, when they are clearly not re-registering, but being treated as registering for a first time, uh, which is not how we understood it last week, uh, whether your ruling can be reconsidered. Speaking, order, speaking, order, right Honourable Winston Peter, are you speaking to the same Point of order, right Honourable Mr. Speaker, I also, uh, New Zealand First also seeks 
you to review your 6 June decision. Uh, just to quote you briefly, you said, quotes, he has given me an assurance that his party expects to file an application for re-registration early next week. If you go to the comments by first the Electoral Commission and also the uh, President of the United Party, Robin Gunston, he has affirmed, and in his own words, the registration of a brand new party is being sought. Not one, in his words again, not one just deregistered. Uh, then he goes on to say, for a new party they will only accept, and that is what the uh, Electoral Commission, which is the statutory body that is applying this law, has said. And then you will be reminded that you said that you were giving them time to sort themselves out, but your purpose at the time was to uh, find that they were re-registering. Now, demonstrably, this is not new. The Electoral Commission, though, has made it patently clear how the law applies, and on that basis, I am asking you to review your decision because the party called United Future does not exist. Speaking to the point of order, the Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Uh, Mr Speaker, notwithstanding those uh, pleadings from the uh, two previous speakers, uh, it is a fact that the recognition of parties in Parliament uh, by the Speaker and in standing orders is quite separate from the requirements of a political party to become registered under the Act. That is patently clear for anyone who is capable of reading, Mr O'Rourke, and uh, if we were to... Order. Take the, this is uh, a point of order, and it well, will be heard in silence. It's also uh, a point established by previous speakers uh, from quite some time back. 34.1 makes it clear that if a party is registered under Part 4 of the Electoral Act 1993, then they are elected or a member is elected to Parliament uh, from that party, uh, they are entitled to be recognised as a party for parliamentary purposes. Now, all of this went through, was gone through in 2002, and I think, sir, um, the suggestions that you need to now change your mind because of a statement from either the Electoral Commission or from the President of the party uh, don't take away from the fact that your prime responsibility is to ensure that members are treated fairly according to standing orders. To, uh, Mr Brownlee's contribution. I'll hear the Honourable David Parker. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. The problem with... Uh, uh, with respect to uh, Mr Brownlee's definition or interpretation of 34.1 is it asserts that the words in co inside the commas uh, add to the breadth of the primary part of the clause and uh, in my respectful submission, sir, that cannot be the case. The, the, the standing order absolutely says that to be entitled to be recognised as a political party for parliamentary purposes you must be a party registered under Part 4 of the Electoral Act 1993. That is, that is the common sense and clear interpretation of that clause, and it would, with respect to uh, Mr Brownlee, be a nonsense to interpret it otherwise. What he tries to do is say that the words inside the commas, which, say, which, which effectively says, well, you've got to be elected for this rule to apply, somehow extend the definition beyond registered political parties. And that with respect, sir, is a nonsense. So I agree with the uh, submission from my colleague, Mr Mallard, that on the basis of this latest determination, you should uh, redetermine your earlier finding. Speaker? I'll hear from the Honourable General Grownley. Uh, Mr Speaker, I, I don't think the, the member who just spoke can reasonably leave out the qualification in one, which is elected at the preceding general election. And that, sir, was the position that was taken by the Speaker... Uh, back in 2002, when you had uh, Mr Anderton's alliance breaking up, uh, you had uh, Mr Grover, who claimed to be the leader of the Liberal Party, in fact recognised as an independent. Uh, you had people there, uh, you had the Green Party in, at that time also recognised as independents, uh, because the Green Party was part of the alliance at the preceding election and not elected as a Green Party. No, they were Order. not recognised Order. in Parliament, even though they were registered outside. Order. And that is the point. I've, I've heard sufficient to rule on this matter as at the moment. As I gave a ruling last week, I have interpreted that we are chartering new waters 
in the fact we had a party that was recognised at the start of this parliament legitimately and according to the uh, standing orders, who then has subsequently, the party then has subsequently become deregistered. So I am treading carefully in that we are chartering new waters. The second point I want to make is that when I ruled last week, I was expecting a timetable of six to eight weeks, and I am watching developments currently that may extend that timeline and potentially extend them substantially. And on that basis, I will certainly give consideration to the points that have been raised, particularly by the Honourable Trevor Mallard, and I will come back to the House when I've done so. We move now to questions for oral answer. And the first question is in the...